All right, let's move on to second line. Our nice man gets chemotherapy for four to six months. We optimox him, let's say, and he's on uh, uh, CAPE and BEV, goes on, let's say, median of eight months uh, on that uh, arm and then begins to progress. Just for provocative sake, he still has some residual neuropathy, gang, um, just to make our life simple. And now we've got to decide about second uh, and subsequent lines of therapy. Fadi. So we have new data. I think this is the most challenging area in the treatment of metastatic colon cancer. What do we do in second line? Teach us about the Velour study and its impact. So as a second line, especially after patients who have mostly, I'd say, have received in the United States, bevacizumab as a front line with the skeleton cytotoxic of choice, what do we do? The Velour study mainly, you know, international studies, although 28% of the patients were from the United States. It has been a positive study. In fact, aflibrisept is FDA approved in the United States for patients who have progressed after oxaliplatin and fluoroprimidine. It does not necessarily say second line, although the Velour study was designed as a second line. And the primary endpoint of uh, overall survival, altogether the study where there's an improvement of about maybe one month in overall survival. Now, tw uh, not all patients, as I mentioned, 28% of the patients have received bevacizumab, most of them in the United States. And there was a poster presentation of the North American patients and how did they perform? You would expect because they have received bevacizumab 75%, they may perform even less. In fact, when you look at the data of overall survival, it's even improved further from 12.8 months to about 17.9 months. But maybe that speaks for the standard of care United States or Northern America with subsequent lines. Because when you look at the PFS per se and objective response rate in the North American mini velour, if you want, it was not much better, in fact, much different from the parent velour. So we have to take that into consideration. Another thing I would like to highlight is the curves are interesting because the curve continues splitting all the way. And when you do analysis by segments of six months, the hazard ratio of benefit continue improving up to more than a year and a half after starting the study. So that's a bit intriguing about the interest. Of and, and we're seeing use in the United States of the Ziva Flipper set based on the approval, based on the Velour study. Before we go on, let's put a little more data on the table. Alan, the TML study comes out the same time Different but similar study highlighted right. for so us. So the population of patients is different, but the concept is the same, using a, a VEGF inhibitor in second line. In Velour, uh, about a third of the patients had seen a prior VEGF inhibitor. That was BEV. Those were mostly patients in the U.S. TML took patients who had failed either full FOX or full theory and uh, was, were on BEV and then flipped them to, another, to the other alternative and then continued BEV or didn't continue BEV. And what they showed was uh, a benefit to the patients who continued bevacizumab in second line. Uh, this is, this, we predicted this would be the case. In fact, many of us thought it would be a bigger impact based on a, a registry series of data that had been published a few years earlier, which showed almost a year of benefit. This reminds us why registries, why there's so much instinct that oncologists have as to who they put on registries and who they treat. It turns out they could pick the winners pretty well because those patients, that was a much bigger benefit than we saw in the randomized study. What I like is that's sort of our own biomarker. We can identify patients sitting in front of us that seems to be benefiting. I, I, I think, which is why phase two studies at single institutions don't really usually lead to big winners uh, in phase three studies because we, do, we can figure this out, many of us, or some, at least sometimes. Now, what this study uh, really raised are, are some real dilemmas, I think, about managing patients, which is once you start BEV, bevacizumab, and why this might be the case with any VEGF inhibitor, is there a downside to stopping it? Even when you look at in inspecting other studies and figuring out how patients did downstream, did it matter when bevacizumab was stopped? Does that hurt, uh, hurt a population of patients and, and uh, others are not hurt? So it's a very, it's a confusing factor. I think for second line though, it tells me that I need to, if I've started with a, a VEGF inhibitor, I need to continue a VEGF inhibitor. Uh, of course, the dilemma is what if you stop it for surgery or you stop it for something else? Are you gonna lose ground? And these are questions we can't answer from this data. One thing I will say is the studies are not side by side. You can't really compare them head to head. 
because remember, TML, these are patients who had proven that they could tolerate bevacizumab. They'd had at least three months of effective therapy at, to, at the outset, so no, but no primary refractory patients. Mm -hmm. So a different population than the Valor study. So head to head, they, they really can't match up. Axel, before, next one, do the EAGLE study for us. EAGLE, yeah, so question is, what dose do you use in, of bevacizumab once you've kind of go through this TML concept, Bev, beyond progression? And, uh, you know, actually we tried to answer this question in a, in a, a US study which failed due to a poor accrual. But the question was, every two weeks, five or 10 milligrams per kilogram, do you need a higher dose in second line therapy? And a Japanese study looked at this, you know, all patients had received oxaplatin plus bevacizumab based first line therapy and they randomized patients second line, almost 400 patients, huge study for that question. Fulfiri, bevacizumab with Bev, five or 10. The study was negative in terms of, you know, the bevacizumab dose did not matter in second line therapy, which is actually not unexpected because the BRIGHT study uh, registry that we, 90%, 95% of patients had five milligram. The TML study, five milligrams. So we saw the benefit in whatever way um, without the higher dose. And I think this is one of the reasons why the pricing of, uh, let's say, Ziv or Flibacep was misled, you know, in various ways because the lower dose of bevacizumab is appropriate in second therapy. And they priced it at double. They priced it to at double with and double. they got hurt. 